In this video, I want to talk about the black box approach to fuzzing and content discovery. And the reason why I've been thinking about this for the next step of the five week program is because on Discord, I've seen a lot of people host their streams and a lot of times they are doing content discovery and they're using these different dictionary files to look for different files and paths within a website or a asset that they have found. But I see a lot of times a lot of good opportunities are going to get missed or not looked at because they are not properly fuzzing. So this video is an extension to Monday's video, which was what is fuzzing. And now based on all of your reactions, we're going to jump into how to properly fuzz and find leads. And this video is actually based on a recent vulnerability that I found. I can't set the target, unfortunately. It was a private program. And a lot of times when I talk to a lot of different hackers and they talk about finding vulnerabilities through recon, it's something similar to what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's jump into it really quickly and take a look at what is it like to properly fuzz for files and paths. But before we jump into the lab, it is not too late to join Discord. We are hosting weekly sessions from hacking to recon to actually teaching each other of hacking. So if you want to join one of these sessions, go into the description, click the Discord link down below, come join us, and now let's jump into our lab. As always, you can go to my five-week program hub on Hacking Hub, click on the content discovery explained and follow along. Or if you don't want to do it right now, just watch me do it. But just know that this is free and you have access to it to play around with this and kind of see if you can keep up. All right, let's jump into this. The first thing we're going to see is usually when it comes to a black box approach, what I see a lot of times is that you either see an error message like this one on the screen right now or something like an Nginx or an Apache default page. A lot of times hackers give up on there and they don't do a lot of uh, content discovery, but that is not something that you should give up on. And let me show you what I mean. Obviously, the first step to doing this is to use one of the fuzzers that you want to use. I like to use FFuff. You can use whatever one you like. I know there's Ferox Buster, uh, WFuzz, Dyer Buster. There's a bunch of them out there. Uh, rest in peace, Directory Search. I love that tool. I haven't used it in a while, but I know a lot of people still use it. Uh, that is all personal preference, but I'm going to use FFuff for this one, and we're going to run it to this all.txt. And if you don't have your own word list, you can go to Seclist on GitHub, or you can go to Asset Notes word list page and download one of theirs. This one that I I'm using is kind of similar to uh, what's on Cyclist, and you can see right off the bat it's found something like log and data. Usually, what you can do is you can do a recursion here and have it just recursively look for files and vulnerabilities within each of those folders. So once it files data, it's going to queue it, and then same thing with log, and it's going to look for vulnerabilities within them or files actually within them. But in this case, I see logs, and a lot of times I see people don't really look at logs or they're not really contextualizing it. So for this case, though, we're going to take a look at logs, and I want to show you how I approach it when it comes down to backup logs and kind of contextualizing what you're looking at on the screen. So what we want to do next is I'm actually going to show you a file that I have on here. And this is mostly used for when I need something specific like date. So you can see I have dates all the way to 2024. So it's going to do 31, 12, 24, which is 31st of December, 2024. But also you can see there's different formats. Once 2023 ends, it has it for the full year instead of just 23. And then you can see that the dates flip. So the year comes first and then uh, the month and day. And you can see all these different formats on there. A lot of times when you look for a backup or log directory, that's a really good one to look at. But there's also other use cases. So for example, if you want to put passwords to try and see password and that number, you need to have these different word lists. So I've created this every year or so I have to update it because once 2024 is over, then I kind of also need to have 2023, 2024, and 2025. So keep that in mind. There's a little bit of manual work. You can use a bunch of different tools on GitHub. I can actually look for date generators on GitHub and they will give you something like this that I have. And you can just play around with it and create it. But now we're going to feed that word list to our same tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually grab the URL for this and we're going to do a fuzz for the log directory. And we're going to say, hey, I want you to look for maybe something like logs, log, and then we can add the word fuzz here, which means that every time it looks for the word log, it's going to attach whatever is in dates. So it's going to start with our first date all the way through and add it there. What I like to do with just logs specifically is 
I like to put the word log in there and see if anything finds. Sometimes there isn't a dash and sometimes you just don't even have to put the word log in there. But before we send that out, let's quickly make sure we do some filtering and we also add a match for response code that only comes back as 200. So if you're not familiar with response codes, look at it. I don't want to look for anything for 401, 403, or even 404. I only care for what is valid that's going to return 200. But since I've helped design this hub, I'm going to actually cancel this because I know it's not going to come back with any solutions or answers for us. But I kind of want to show you my thought process. You can also do something like a dash E. Dash E allows you to do multiple different extensions. So instead of putting log there, you can put it here and say, hey, I want to try log, txt, and so on. But for now, we're going to remove this and look at the solution in this case the solution is just the date dot log but honestly sometimes it may not be dot log it could be dot txt it could be different variations of it that really just comes down to just spending time and fuzzing for it. this is where fuzzing becomes fun it's kind of like solving a puzzle and in this case you're just solving to find the valid file name but now we can see that it came back with a lot of these different file names so i'm just going to copy this and put it into our routes.txt and I'll show you why I'm doing that. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna open up a routes file and I'm going to cut for the delimiter with a space. So anything that has a space in here, it's gonna look for it and it's gonna give us the first field. So the first field is being here. It's gonna separate them by spaces and whatever field comes first, which is our file names, it's gonna cut it. And then we're gonna use awk to print that and attach our URL with the keyword log at the end of it and then we're going to send it to curl but before we do curl i'm going to just do this part so you can see kind of what it looks like it's just generating urls for us so we can now feed it into curl and say hey i want you to curl every single one of these files and kind of show me what's in there and once we hit this it's going to make that request and it's going to show us the results of every single one of those curls so what this one shows what this one shows it's going to just open it and kind of want to look at what these log files look like a lot of times when you look at logs there are some really cool information that could help you create leads and maybe find vulnerabilities in this case what stands out for me is this backup file but sometimes it could also leak the name of files or admin functionality that you may not have access to and you can go look at it and for example, this case right here, there's a config file. What you can do is you can try different extensions. You can go back to FF and kind of do something like config.php and fuzz for it right here. You can give it extensions like back, backup, old, all these different ones. So this is kind of where you start kind of understanding what these different log files are giving you and where do you go next to fuzz for data. So it becomes a puzzle. In this case, the puzzle is what is this file? So what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to go back to our terminal and we are going to actually download this backup file and write it to this file name right there. And quickly, we're going to unzip it. And once it is unzipped, this is the source code for this exact application. So many times I've had the ability to either find a .git folder in SVN or even just go on GitHub and find the source code of a particular application based on an error name or some kind of a lead. A lot of times that could be even a readme file that just points me to a GitHub page. And then you have access to the entire source code. I know that source code review isn't the easiest thing to do for a lot of people, including myself, but a lot of times it's very, very obvious. If I go actually into this admin function, let's take a look. We can see that one, this is an admin functionality. Sometimes I don't even have authentication in front of them. Trust me, it has happened way more than you can think of. And if you can't understand something, in this case, I'm going to start with the preview file because that's what a vulnerability is. Again, I've designed this and you can copy this and kind of ask chat GPT. In this case, I'm using LLM. I'm just giving it the code from our file and it's going to come back and say, hey, there is actually a load remote file parameter in there, which you can see right here that reaches a file, attaches this path right here and gives you the content of that file. So in this case, it's actually identifying this. You can also ask it, how do I exploit it? So we can go, how do I exploit it? It may not give us the answer because oh, actually it does work. There we go. I thought it's going to not give us the answer because it wants to say ethical. But so if we actually grab that right here, we're going to go back to curl and we're going to actually make a curl request to that. We're going to go to admin functions, preview.php, I think is what it was called, preview.php. And this was what it gave us. And if we send that, let's do that one more time. 
you can see that it comes back and gives us access to these files which is the etc password file on this box and honestly it's probably one of the cooler and more fun bugs that i found it looks a lot easier watching from the outside because i spent hours of time figuring out these different pieces from the dates to the backup and then looking at the source the source wasn't as easy as this but honestly i think with how many resources are out there especially with chat gpt being there it is easier to find vulnerabilities if you have access to the source code itself all right, that's it. Let me know what you think. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.